Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Uwan Gaming. I'm Orn, uh, oh, joined by Palatipus Slayer. Uh, he's on his phone right now because he's uh, somewhere else, so don't forgive the bad audio quality on his part, but say hello. Hey. Uh, literally, like, ten seconds ago, they just announced uh, Knights of the Mediterranean, uh, the which is the name, I guess, of the new expansion, and we're going to be reading through it and probably watching the video at the very end, probably. Okay, uh, two new civ- two- I- wow, I totally thought we were just gonna get one civilization. Not- not just- yeah, not, they, not two. They've done such a good job for even keeping, like, civilization singular throughout this whole thing. Like, mm -hmm. I am- they, they did a good job for once. Like, that, right. like, keeping a leak under wraps. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I, I really like it when games surprise us like this. Uh, get ready to control the Mediterranean, two exciting civilizations, the Italians and the Maltese. Wow, I know nothing about this. <laughs> That's wonderful. Okay. It's Age of Days Bolt is what it's looking like. It's, it's what? It's Age of Days Bolt 3 now. Age of Days Bolt 3. Please enjoy a whole new set of new maps, some engaging game modes. Oh, you mean like the ones you promised four patches ago? <laughs> Yeah. All right, let's see. 30, 30 new maps, nine new small sieves. Wow. Eight historical maps. This is a ton of content. Holy fuck. This is a yeah. ton of content. All right, a uh, table of contents. Yeah, there's going to be a lot to go through here. Fabulously wealthy merchant republics, kingdoms, and duchies. Even the papacy has driven the Renaissance and dominated the trade networks of the Mediterranean. However, when the Italian politi uh, uh, polities were not engaged in conflicts aboard, they fought each other nearly incessantly until the Risorgimento uh, gave rise to the new kingdom of Italy. I don't know anything about Italian history. Uh, basically, yeah. Basically, they were uh, a battleground for a long time. You know, you kind of had like the merchant republics. Uh, then you had like Naples. Then you had like the Italian. So, I mean, Italy was a battleground, kind of like how Germany was for much of Age of Empire III's like time period. Okay, got until it. Until the Kingdom of Savoy slowly but surely uh, unified the Italian peninsula in like the uh, 19th century. Got it. Uh, unite a wealthy but splintered Italy with, uh, while well, new settlers flock to your booming empire. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and architects construct buildings for free. Oh, we got a uni unique unit called Architect. I'm assuming it's like a, a travois or something like that. Uh, possibly. I have no idea. But it's probably, instead of a wagon, it's probably like a slow building. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Invest at the Lombard. Okay, so this is the bank building that we were looking at earlier, right? Yeah. The, uh, like the milling symbol on it. Yeah. Uh, it's got the Mario red turtle shell on it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, to optimize your economy and turn a quick profit, or construct a towering basilica and send papal soldiers to strengthen and complement your army. So it looks like there's like an investment me mechanic where you give resources into the building and then it gives you more resources as time goes by. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. That, uh, sounds kind of like the African Civs market in a way. Like uh, mm -hmm. a risk reward and, and, you know, payoff. Yeah, I love that. I, I, I bet once you put resources in you, like, can't get them back out until your time is up. Or something mm -hmm. to that effect. And you get to pick how long you go in. It stays in there. All right. Use shielded pavisiers to lure his opponents into an ambush of Bersaglieri. Or let El Medi lower their lances and carry the day with a thundering charge. Okay, so this is what I was kind of wondering right here. So um, when when Sweden came out, they moved Hackapellets from being a mercenary to a Swedish unit and then replaced them with the Harkabusers. Right? Mm -hmm. So when it t Italy was announced, I was wondering if they were going to take away the El Medi or maybe like the Swiss pikemen because we saw those in the picture as well and replace them with slightly different pikemen and models uh, for their mercenary versions, you know? Right. No, I, I, I am curious as well because like El Menti is like a very Italian uh, signature thing then. Yeah. The, uh, I'm trying to remember the Age of Empires 2 unique unit, but... Uh, what were they called? They're, they're anti gun battle. Long story short, they were both very popular mercs throughout the entire like period of the Italian uh, right. Age of Empire City, so it would make sense. Oh, they start with a customizable home city. That's kind of cool. It is cool. Because Sweden didn't start with that. All right. Uh, starts with an explorer and an architect. Okay, so they start with a free building right away. Mm hmm. 
Um, receives a free settler with every technology and economic building. So with every tech, oh. sorry, no, re re receive a free techno uh, so settler with every technology and economic buildings can research them in any age. So that is like the Burgundian so, age vampire. That is so good. So you could sit in age one. Yeah, you could like sit in age people. one and get like seven settlers from your market just by researching techs. Or even in transition, get uh, steel traps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's super cool. Uh, can send uh, basilica, uh, basilica units. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm sure uh, to uh, to spawn at any military shipment point. Uh, okay, you, you can send a unit to a military shipment point. Wonderful. Thank you, game. I love that unique mechanic. <laughs> oh, oh, it's it's a building. It's a building. That's what it is. Uh, can send basilica units to spawn at any military shipment point. Uh, is a powerful uh, ships powerful papal allies that in boost nearby building construction speed. Okay, so this is an aura building, and then you train, but then the units that you train pop out of your shipment point instead of the the building itself. Okay, I mean that's that's kind of nifty when you think about it. Yeah, it's, it is pretty um, cool. It's kind of like a better intervention uh, mechanic, or not intervention, but a, a consulate mechanic. Because you could, like, put this in your base and then put, like, an outpost near your enemy and train units right next to your enemy's base. That's pretty cool. But, like, well, do it from your base and have it be safe, you know? And then if, you're al if your enemy destroys the outpost, it doesn't stop the training like they would if it destroyed a barracks, you know? Oh. So they just pop oh. out of your town center instead. That's really cool. And the Lombard... Okay, we have more details on it. It's really cheap. Only 100 wood and 100 coin. Uh, the Lombard trains outlaws and mercenaries, uh, but it all it is also host to a unique investment mechanic, allowing the conversion of resources for free, but over time, yeah, this is what I was talking about, it's an investment, uh, but it's also conversion investment, which is kind of surprising to me. Okay, that is, so, you know, that's like if you're floating wood, you can trade it to gold and not lose out, so it's kind of like uh, yeah, a yeah, better yeah. mechanic, but longer. It's a, it's, it's a, it, it's a get out of jail free card if you accidentally overgather. Granted, it takes some time. It takes some time apparently, but it's cool. Right. I bet that would be really important in treaty. Like I could see supremacy probably not so much because you know you're just gonna macro, mm -hmm. um, anyways, do what you want. But I bet in treaty that's huge, especially for like wood cost and stuff. I'm guessing by the uh, the picture that you can build multiple of these and then have each one set to convert different amounts of resources at the same time. You can probably get some crazy fucking build orders with these. Oh, I'm, I'm sure this this is gonna you know like anytime there's a DLC, I, I hope you like Italy because dude, see it in Italy. this is like my jam right here. I'm I'm gonna have so much fun like crunching numbers and shit for build orders. Oh, I bet. Well, All right. I'm just going to be with the Knights of Malta, cleansing the uh, Sirs Scourge of the Mediterranean. Unique units include the Architect. Inspired by the original plans for an Italian civilization, Italians have a unique civilian unit called the Architect. Uh, can build free, but very slowly. Oh, so it's not like a Travois at all. It's just a settler that builds things for free, but super slowly. That's nuts. Holy shit. I wonder how slowly that is. Uh, that'll be interesting. We'll have to see because that sounds like one of those things that can be busted, underutilized if it's not tweaked just right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it occurs to me that technology is being researched at every age. I'm assuming that doesn't apply to like veteran upgrades and shit. But uh, I wonder if it applies. I wonder if it applies to like factory upgrades and if you could get your age four factory upgrades into age three if they had an age three factory shipment. In theory, yes. I mean, if, if it's all economic um, technologies, then all you would need is the building to unlock it, which yeah. for the most part is mainly limited to what? The market and, now did it say just economic or maybe the, the market and the arsenal? I, I don't know about the arsenal, um, but farms and estates for sure would give you a settler for them. Yeah, so you're right, estates and farms. So yeah, that's that's a really interesting mechanic. So like if you're stuck at age three, you can still like boom your eco behind it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, can pay... I can probably call that right now. Or very <laughs> limited villager shipments if they're getting free ones with every tech. Oh, okay, so the architect can build for free but very slowly. Or you can pay for foundations to build very fast. I'm assuming... 
the foundations are more expensive than the original building. That's my guess. Um, partly build free foundations that can be converted into paid foundation. What the fuck? Uh, for part of the costs to finish construction quickly, including with normal villagers. Okay, so you can start building slowly and then pay for foundation afterwards is my understanding of this. And then, and then you can finish it off just with bills. So you could start slowly, pay for some foundation, and then turn around and have your bills finish it off. That is so weird. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pavasir. This this is the crossbow unit we saw with a, a kite shield on it. Instead of a normal crossbowman, Italians have access to the unique Pavasir, which can change its armor with different stances. Oh, we got another one of those. Yeah. I mean, this one kind of makes sense because if you put the huge shield in front of you, like, as long as the, the animation's, like, you know, really obvious, I don't think this will be as, like, horrible as uh, some of the other civs were, like, you know... Fucking desert warriors and shit. <laughs> yeah, that are slightly more <laughs> spread out, and suddenly you're supposed to key into the fact that they're about to counter you, so... I, I like this idea because it, it makes sense, like... If you put a huge shield in front of you, like, that's probably melee, or range, or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. All right. Their, their their next unit is the uh, Schiavone. You, you like my Italian accent? No, I'm so good at it. Sure. Uh, Specialized. Do the Bersalagi? I don't. I don't know enough about the the names of Italian, but uh, they did say they get this unique uh, Bersalagi, which this sounds like it. Uh, specialized light infantry, so it's a skirmisher. Uh, so Pavisiers, mm -hmm. so they got two skirmisher units uh, that only uh, that only counters other light infantry. What? Okay, so it's a skirmisher that counters other skirms. It's like um, it's like the skirmisher of uh, Jaguar Prowler Knights. Okay, that's uh, you know it'll be interesting to see what the rest of the roster rounded out. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, but does so very effectively. Uh, Papar uh, Papal Guard, uh, Papal Hand Infantry that protects nearby ally allies by absorbing some of the inflicted damage. Uh, wait, is that is that to say that they make good tanks, or is that to say that if I shoot uh, if, if I shoot a, a Pavasir, that some of the damage will go to the Papal Guard? Because that's a big difference. Yeah, that is a huge difference. Um, uh, and I think by the sounds of it, it sounds like the the damage gets done to the off from the Papal Guards. Or no, no, the other way around, that they're like a sponge. Yeah, the, it, it sounds like they absorb some a, a portion of the damage that's dealt to Pavasirs behind them, for example. Uh, so, can so hook if it's like a percentage or if it's like a direct, you know? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Uh, can hook enemies with his halberd to slow them down. Okay, so yeah. congratulations, your melee unit uh, snares. What do you fucking do? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in addition to the papal guard, we have the papal lancer. Uh, so they don't have Elmedis directly. They have something similar. They probably have an Elmedi shipment though. Uh, right, or it's always trainable for the, yeah. the students Something like that. Uh, Papel Heavy Cavalry that absorbs some of the damage inflicted to nearby allies. Counters all infantry. Okay, so yeah, that, that that's basically confirming it for me. The Papel units absorb a, a, a portion of the damage dealt, dealt to other units. Correct. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing too. Um, counters all infantry. So it's le this is legit another Lancer. The, this is yep. like it's not Naginatas or anything like that. It's legit all infantry, so it's just lancers. Oh. Man, they have like all of the anti-infantry. Holy shit! They have unique crossbow, uh, a skirmisher that counters other skirmishers, pop a lancers. You don't want to use infantry against these guys. Like all of their yeah. units counter infantry. Uh, I, 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 I think not a single unit said like counters cav so far. Yeah. Uh, Papal Zuaves, Ra uh, Papal ranged infantry with high hit points that absorbs some of the damage inflicted to nearby allies. Man, this is a big theme. Uh, performs well against all units countered by artillery. Okay, so yeah, these are marines. They're, they're marines. Except they're countered by artillery instead of uh, countering. So uh, they're marines, but with a much bigger weakness and uh, are easier to mass, it sounds like. Cool. Uh, Papal Bombard. Okay, so this is the gold cannon that we saw. Uh, mm -hmm. Artillery that absorbs some of the damage. And wow. Okay, so it, the, the way I see it, if you make a whole bunch of Papal units, like, your army won't die until it all dies at once. <laughs> wow. 
That's just like that's super good. Yeah. Um, There's just no other way to do it. Like super good. Um, but you know, because because although it, good HP, the, so, the thing like the, the thing about it is. I wonder if it would be faster to kill a Papal Bombard by shooting all the enemies around it, because the damage that it absorbs would go around its uh, def probably 75% range resistance. Oh god, can you imagine that? Like, that's kind of interesting, like, use, like, Falconets just to blow the infantry away around it. To get yeah, around. yeah, and then just deal damage directly to the Papal Bombard through that. That would be weird. That would be. Th this will be something that, like, a lot of things. We'll have to test out the actual mechanic when you, the when it releases to see like how effective it is. Because you're right, it gets around the, the range resist, and then what if do multipliers count? So if I shoot like a dragoon. Yeah, yeah. Is That's... it just HP, or does the does the attack actually bounce into the uh, bombard? That is so bizarre. All right, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, it's home city cards. Italians have access to a variety of new cards, 50 in total. Uh, company oh, cards. Uh, oh, 50 unique cards. Okay, so they, they, of course, have, like, the other cards that other civilizations have as well. Uh, the company cards that send complementing co uh, combinations of natives, mercenaries, and other European allies. Okay, so, they like, um, the, the Dutch anti-cavalry force is, like, their, their shtick, then. Got it. Okay, so I mean that's kind of there, there's already existing templates for that, so yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting to see what they say. Uh, unique Italian cards. Team Morocco Polo Voyages arrives fast. Okay, good. I like this. Team Explorers. Uh, this, this, this has to be like a probably a, a, an age one card. Uh, in the black areas of the map. Sorry, Team Explorers the back air the black areas of the map and doubles the resource reward granted by treasures it's any resource board. already looted are granted to your team again wait so this reveals the entire map and then all doubles your entire team's benefit from treasures including the treasures they've already gotten what the fuck that, that sounds uh you know again i'll i'll, I'll hold my judgment until i see it yeah um Resources already looted or granted to your team again. That just seems, especially in a team game, just absolutely like ball breaking on certain maps and just OP. So I'll just I'll hold off. The ability to like, instantly explore the entire map on like a 4v4 where the map is fucking huge. Mm -hmm. and, and the resource trickles, like when you're able to and getting them again, yeah. like that's that's kind of a bit much because there's Cause... a lot of maps where. Um, so, like so if you use like, the Aztec Explorer, for example, like what do you get like ten thousand XP from nuking like the center XP treasure with all four explorers? Like that. So that's a bit much. USA has a card called Lewis and Clark Exploration. I think is what it's called. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't arrive fast, but it does reveal. Uh, it, do it it doesn't just fully reveal the map, but it reveals everything relevant on the map because it reveals all natural resources, treasures, and everything. You know. Uh, as well as revealing the enemy's position for a few seconds. It doesn't sound like this one does. Uh, but then, in, in ex in, in, instead of, like, double treasure bonus, uh, you get... Uh, the entire team gets 100 XP, is what it is. Okay. I view this as in innately superior. Yeah, yeah. That's a bit... My, we'll, we'll see what happens on, on release day. Mm-hmm. Uh... Venetian Arsenal ships one Arsenal wagon. Docks work much much faster when an Arsenal is nearby. What the fuck? <laughs> they better not get advanced docks then. But uh, that's pretty. And Venetian Venetian Arsenal. So I mean, that's kind of cool that the Arsenal that's wagon. That's so weird. <laughs> I mean, his, there's a historical base. I think that's kind of. I think it's a cool card. But it is cool. It's have, just. It's odd, you know. It's it's cool, but it's odd. Right. You know, speaking of Venetians, too, they had a picture of the Galileus. Uh, I wonder if that is something that they forgot to add for unique units. Or maybe, you know, maybe this isn't all of the unique units, because they even mentioned the Bursa so. mm -hmm. You know, we'll see. I, uh, I couldn't help but notice that the Da Vinci tank wasn't listed in the unique units. Everybody was freaking out about that. I was like, either it's not actually going to be playable, or it's going to be mentioned in, like, a shipment, or, like, you get maybe one from a shipment. You're not going to be able to train them. <laughs> Uh, All right. Yeah. Machiavellianism arrives fast, improves your Italian explorer in combat, enables him to pick up treasures nearly instantly. Oh my god, you can you, you can be the treasure stealing god. 
<laughs> and then gives him a powerful canine companion. Dude, I I would totally send this card. I love this. I would totally send this card and then just, like, be a dick and steal everybody's treasures. Because if you send it with this, then you know where all the treasures are. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I mean probably two cards in age one is a bit much, but that being said, like this card seems kind of fun. And, and you yeah, know, well I mean, it's getting sniped. You're and you know me. And, and you know me. I I love my I love my explorer builds. I love my explorer builds. So I want to work around this. I want I I want to I want to work around this. Yeah, this is cool. I like this. Right. So to finally once and for all that that a hole Aztec guy that's hanging right outside your treasure <laughs> as you're trying to like battle down two wolves. It's like nope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Merchant Republics ships one trading post wagon, grants resources for past and future control of trading posts. What? Uh, grants resources for past. Uh, delivers one trade post wagon, trade post. 20% of all resources you have earned so far are granted again. Future income improved by 30%. Okay, so that's, that's okay. really cool. It's. I mean, it's yeah. The, this is probably. Yeah, this is probably going to be available in, like, Age 3 or something like that. Because USA has a, a, a really good federal card in Age 4 that just doubles trade route effectiveness. So I'm guessing this is, like, I'm guessing this is like Age 3 or something like that. But that's really cool. I like that. That is cool. I, I like the idea. I just hope they don't invalidate. Like, poor Ottomans are... The, the Ottoman player base is already a bit feisty about their current <laughs> Ottoman strength. I could see this really firing them up uh but you're right if it's age three or four then that's a different story it won't affect atp bill uh, as much guardia de finanza i'm sorry i'm gonna keep doing that uh the fine <laughs> the financial police that sounds like a like a meme that somebody on 4chan made up like the cyber police <laughs> call the fight oh you have a problem with me scamming you call the financial police <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> collects yeah. coin for each enemy unit you have defeated so far. Okay, that's kind of cool. I is wonder... It, is that like a pulse? I don't, like a I don't know if it's a flat amount, or maybe it's equivalent to the amount of XP that they're worth. Interesting. But, you know, there's already a lot of civs that have, like, uh, ways to collect money off people dying, so that's yeah. kind of cool, actually. If it's a real time thing, that's kind of like a nifty little boost. Yeah, it is cool. It'd be better for it to ride fast, though, but, you know. Mm -hmm. right. All right. Company cards. Broken Lance Company ships a number of Papal Lancers and Stratiots. Okay, so these are the companies that we were looking at earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you could just get, so you could just be like, hit, hit lots of heavy cavalry because Stratiots are really good. Uh, yeah. Uh, so cav. It looks like you have fire throwers, hospitals, inquisitors. The the fire throwers. I don't know if you played the campaign much, but those are kind of cool. Those are uh, the hoop throwers. Like... The hoop throwers. I yeah. remember those. Yeah, those guys are pretty cool. They're like grenadiers. Yes, but those better. Bigger AOE. Yeah. Yes. Uh, hospitalers, which is like I'm gonna put you in the hospital. Ooh, I wonder what we should call this guy. How about the hospitaler? <laughs> and inquisitors. Uh, I don't know what these guys are because these guys are not the uh, the Jesuit dudes, right? Those are. No, I don't yeah. think so. Um, because those, yeah, the Jesuits make the conquistadors. Whoop! One second, I gotta uh, pop off for a second. Okay, I'll keep going without you. Yeah. Okay, the Black Company ships a number of Black Riders and armored pistoliers. Okay, that's pretty cool. And uh, that I guess that's it for Italians. Uh, yeah, this this civ looks so cool. I want to play these guys so bad. Uh, the Maltese. Now that is a home city. Oh my god, look at that fort along the shoreline. You got those big old bomb bars. Oh, that's beautiful. Guard the Mediterranean against incursions with unique fortifications. Don shining armor to fend off attacks and shell opponents from afar with fixed guns. Holy I'm shit, back. dude. The Maltese have fixed guns! The Maltese have fixed guns! Dude, I'm so psyched for the Maltese. Like, this, like, I mean, the campaigns are not the favorite part of many people in Age of Empires 3, but I always thought that out of the campaign, like, the introduction with the Knights of Maltese is some of the coolest uh, parts of all the Age of Empires 3. Oh, yeah. Uh, the one one of the Mediterranean epito uh, epitomes of a melting pot, Malta was strategically and financially important, and thus most of the surrounding powers coveted it, becoming a stronghold of the Knights Hospitala Hospitalar. Mm -hmm. right. Ship 
sell your opponent so far with fixed guns. I wonder if these are going to work like trebuchets from Dark Souls 2, where like you, you unpack them, and then they, they're stationary until you repack them. Well, I mean, if it's a fixed gun, it might just be an outpost with a huge siege range, like maybe like Culverin range or something. Well, probably Dude, not. I would it's fucking love that. That would be so cool. It's probably like a mortar's range minus one or something, you know what I mean? Probably. All right, fire throwers and great swords win battles. Okay, so that that's what are they going to have like another doppelsolder samurai type unit? Uh, but um, I would imagine so. But the superior logistics of your company win wars. Luckily, you can have both. All right, fighting at sea with order galleys may wet the gunpowder, but your arbalisters won't mind. You can always restock at a gunpowder depot, or blow it up when an enemy army marches past. Okay, so they're gonna have a unique building that boosts their units, or explodes when enemies go near it. Dude, that's hilarious. Like, just put some gunpowder depots nearby, and it's like, if, if people try to siege it with pikes, just blow it up. I love the idea of, like, surrounding your enemy's base with, like, 30 of them. I know that's pro they probably have a strict build limit, but that'd be so funny. <laughs> yeah. well, just like putting it on a strategic point and put build build gunpowder depots next to your enemy's town center and then blow them up. <laughs> oh, well, you, you can't build that close. I know, just, I know, I know, but it, there's there's going to be some meme builds on this. This is cool. All right, let's I, love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, customizable mm -hmm. starts with a grand master. Ooh, I'm kidding. You better be able to have a uh, Morgan Black as uh, uh, a skin. <laughs> I would love to have Morgan Black as a skin, dude. I, I might... really bad, but epic Scottish accent. I might. Uh, <laughs> Maltese units gain additional hit points with each shipment and heal over time when idle. What? Oh, okay, so it's got to be like each shipment is like 1%, right? Yes, it's got to be. I mean, yeah. It, or, or they start off super low or something. Um, yeah. You know, it's probably because in the campaign they use a lot of archaic stuff, so maybe this is their way of, like, keeping the units relevant throughout the ages. I like it, yeah. And uh, the healing, that's just, that's just cool. I ain't gonna that, that is that's cool. Something. That is super cool. Yeah, because that's one of my biggest gripes with Marines is that you can't heal them. So when I'm out of combat, they're just chilling there, you know? Uh, unique buildings, they got the hospital, trains Maltese infantry, heals idle units. Okay, makes sense. I guess it's just a field hospital, but a hospital, yeah. It's, so it's, it's, a, it's a hospital, hospital, but it, it's a hospital and a barracks combined into one that only costs 100 wood. Oh, See, it rough. trains Maltese infantry. I, I bet it trains slowly in exchange, but like still cool. Well, we don't know. This this set might be pretty pretty unique. So let's see. Yeah. They got the what they got? Uh, the commandery. Commandery. Two hundred and fifty wood. One hundred coin. Units can be gar uh, units that can be garrisons may be deployed from any other commandery. Uh, wait. Uh, trains powerful for. Does this mean you can teleport? Is this Nidus canals? For Age of Empires Trains powerful foreign allies from around Europe who pledge their alliance to the Knights of St. John. Okay, so this sounds like some kind of uh, mercenary, yeah. saloon, saloon or something like that. Yeah, saloon or consulate. Yeah, um, yeah, something like that. But th what this sounds like to me, what this sounds like to me is that you could build a commandery on one end of the map and then a commandery on the other end and then pop your settlers into one and then teleport them to the opposite end of the map. It's literally a Nidus canal from StarCraft. <laughs> <laughs> That's so well, cool. People, people just love the mechanic of the Incan Fort being garrisonable. So let's let's do the same thing, but let them teleport. Oh I, I what I think they might end up doing, and I I would really love this is if the um, the explorer has the ability to make these, or if there's a card that you can send that allows them to make these, so that you don't have to send a villager over in order to make the rest of them teleport. You know. I mean, this is like. I can see this being really dirty, you know, put something behind the enemy's base, pop out soldiers, you know what I mean? Like, almost like Chosky's. This, I can see this causing a lot of salt. I think well, no, no, it says units that can be garrisoned, so it's talking about, like, settlers and healers and stuff. Oh, okay. Right? Right? Well, I, I hope so. I agree. I agree. I think if it's that, that's a little bit less obnoxious, because then you can make your base that much more unraidable. Like, if you have forward vills, you can hop them out somewhere else. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. 
that's less broken. I was thinking, like, good God, can you imagine if you could just do basically the haraka back and forth kind of thing? Pa 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 da da da. Uh, okay. Maybe there's a maybe there's a card you can send that allows you to garrison units in only commanderies. That I don't know. Yeah, uh, they also have the depot, an age two building that costs fifty wood and fifty coin. A lot of their with a lot of the buildings cost coin in this expansion. Uh, depot filled to the brim with gunpowder. Okay. So, oh, right. Th th is this the um the thing? That, yeah. Here it is. Uh, boost attack speed of nearby gunpowder units, artillery, and buildings. Uh, will explode if destroyed, damaging all units. <laughs> I wonder if you can manually explode them by deleting. Dude, that's that's gonna be the question. Yeah. Yeah. Because if so, that's huge. You know, that is. Well, and, you, you and they're cheap. Them. They're they're dirt fucking cheap too. I was expecting them to be more expensive. And increasing the attack speed, like I guess it'll depend on what gunpowder units uh, Maltese get. I would imagine not much. But... We we also don't know the build order for them. Uh, so if you can build multiple, I wonder if the the aura stacks, or if it's one time, or if it's like a single aura. You know, if it's like a TP versus I don't know something else, like yeah. a field hospital that doesn't double heal. Yeah. Uh, fixed gun. Uh, it, it's a it's a building actually. It's not not a unit. Uh, powerful stationary artillery. Yeah, you're right. It's it's an outpost with a shit ton of range. Is what it is. One hundred wood, six hundred coin. So it, ain't, it it's it's like a super falconet that's mobile. So I mean, that's 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 expensive. And it's that is HD. expensive. So interesting. You know, it's probably their way to stop artillery because they're probably not going to have a lot of great anti-cannons other than stuff like that that's my right thing. all right okay. the the <laughs> build fortifications trading post okay so standard explorer but probably better in melee probably more like a native explorer with like you know cards and melee built definitely he has to have swashbuckler like he just he it, it, it doesn't say that he he's specifically melee though uh, it says build uh, fights and builds fortifications and trading posts. I wonder if this means that he's going to be a fort builder like the USA and Mexico is, or maybe if he's going to be able to build uh, commanderies or depots. You know, or fixed guns even. That's a fortification. Yeah, it is a fortification. Maybe he can make fixed guns. That's really cool. Or maybe he has cards that can boost what he can do. You know, mm -hmm. hospital. Yeah. Hospitaler, hand infantry, absorbs damage faster near buildings. The fuck? Okay. Sure. <laughs> so basically, it's probably just like a rod kind of stand-in. Yeah. Um, but rod and dock mix of some sort would be my uh, idea. Something like that. Sentinel. Uh, defensive musketeer that may construct outposts, so possibly fixed guns. We don't know if fixed guns and outposts are separate from each other. Uh, stronger near buildings, especially fortifications. Oh wow! So this is this is my type of sim. This is like a it's a base builder. Yeah, it's a base builder. Yeah, exactly. I love I it. I can play my sim city uh, and 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 kind of push, but not necessarily like uh, you know super offensively at the same time. We'll have to see if their eco and stuff is decent to keep up with all this. But this is good. And okay, the fire thrower, fire thrower yeah. light infantry that attacks with incendiary weapons that inflicts burning damage, counters heavy infantry and light cavalry. Okay, so, it, so it's um, it, it's basically jungle bowmen, but with fire instead of poison, is what I'm dead at. Oh well, yeah, it's, it, or like a, like, so like a grenadier, and um, probably some AOE. Good. Yeah. Dude, I like, like this really just because yeah, though I like this just because the hoop throwers were like the coolest fucking unit, and it always bugs me that I could never build them anywhere else. Right? Like, same, dude. I'm I'm just super psyched. This is like so far the Civ seems like uh like like it is in the campaign. I always thought it was a super cool idea to uh, the, the Maltese being able to add them. Plus the history behind the the Knights of I think it's Knights of Saint John and Malta. I, I know absolutely it's nothing pretty, about these civilizations' history. <laughs> it's, it's pretty incredible, from Rhodes all the way to Malta, and like their uh, ability to Do, uh, kind of hold back the Ottomans I'm time and time again, despite their small numbers. It, it's it's cool. It's cool that they're adding Italy and this because this kind of gives you the whole breadth of the Central and Eastern Mediterranean uh, I, struggle. I'm going to learn the shit out of both of these civs. I am so excited. 
I am too. They they might actually have my money this time instead of me waiting for it to go on sale. Cause yeah. this, this is cool. Around right. 65 unique cards, tongue cards that send units from other European nations in support of your cause. Okay, so they have uh, they they have consulate armies as cards. Got it. Yep. Uh, Greek fire. Ooh, that's cool. Uh, enables docks Greek to construct Greek. fire ships. Ooh. Explosive vessel stowed with Greek fire, a secret incendiary mixture, which uh, inflicts considerable damage upon contact. I wonder if the fire is going to be green. Uh, no, it'll probably be just normal uh, Greek fire, but that's the fire junks. You're getting fire junks, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, fire cool. towers? Researches frontier outposts and enables an additional powerful long range fire attack. Oh my god, we get flamethrower towers? This is so cool. Oh, it's so cool. Oh, for, for the old people, that's some command and conquer stuff right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wignacourt Constructions. Settlers gather natural resources significantly faster when nearby a town center outpost. Okay, this is a common theme with everything. Is um, like it is uh, this this base building idea where like all of your buildings apply buffs to the rest of your units you yeah, know that, seems like that just seems to be a multi thing yeah it this is map control and sim city the civilization even more so than hausa yes team knights of the round table i thought that was supposed to be in like great britain or something like that Yes. <laughs> uh, the, the Knights of the Round Table ship one hospitalier to each team member for each town center they have on the map. Okay, so you can get probably... you can Each team member gets, what, three town center... Uh, three hospitaliers, maybe? That sounds not so great. Also grants plus 2% hit points to all units on your team, unlike the other team cards. Okay, so here, here it is. It's two hit points. It's 2% hit points for each shipment you send, not one. Yep. Um, and yeah, also, yeah. this one applies it to team units instead of just yours. God, that's going to be insane to treat. That like is. I mean, th granted, this is the only one that applies to your team, but it's only 2%. Mm. But still, you know. Uh, fire yeah. throwers. Equips fire throwers with a flamethrower! <laughs> 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 a powerful charged attack that inflicts considerable burning damage in close range combat. I love it. They're just like flamethrowers. They're a thing now. They are. This is the, the noble knights of Malta and their <laughs> flamethrowers. <laughs> what? Oh, okay, I'm not complaining. Tongue cards. Italian tongue. Ships a commandery wagon. I don't know what a commandery wag. Oh, uh, commandery, duh. Uh, the, the unique building. The teleporter building. It's the teleporter building. Okay, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, sends a commandery wagon and a number of powerful... Uh, Skiavoni. Uh, Those were the uh, anti-skirm skirm. Yep, yep. Enables commanderies to recruit more. Okay, so you can train... Okay, so it looks like these the commanderies are going to be upgradable to train units. Even if you can't so this teleport. Is like the Mexico card. Uh, hopefully, they'll cost resources because that's what kept the Mexico cards mainly balanced. Is, yeah. Uh, like, you know, so you can get Spanish Musketeers, or there's the Curacao. I can't pronounce it, but Curacao uh, uh, card too, and you can train them from like forts. Uh, but it does cost some resources to send. Uh, but yeah, that's exactly what these ones are. Ships French tongue ships a commandery wagon and a number of powerful cruisers. All right, so it's cruisers with ten with ten percent extra stats. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm assuming these are going to be ten percent extra stats too. Enables commanderies to recruit them. Oh, okay. So all of these include a commandery wagon and then enable the commandery to train the unit that you send the tongue with. Interesting. Really uh, interesting. But look at this next one, dude. And then think about the town center bonus that you get. Uh, ships a commandery wagon and a number of settler wagons enables commanderies to recruit them. Whoa! Okay, so like you're talking about like uh, this one right here. Settlers gather natural resources significantly. It is natural resources though, not not like mills and estates. True, but I mean, just drop a town center next to a gold mine and then drop that. So now you have settler wagons popping out doing like you know settler wagon stuff because they already take buffs super well. And then if they start getting raided, you can pop them in the commandery and then pop them out on the other side of the map. Yep. <laughs> oh my god. Next to another town center that or outpost and then 
<laughs> yeah. Dude, I, I'm excited for this civilization. This looks cool as fuck. Holy shit. Yeah, historical yeah, maps. Uh, historical maps, variety of new maps. The Italian War, the Eight Years' War, the Deluge, the Great Turkish War, the Great Northern War. Napole Ooh, Napoleonic Wars! Oh, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, Russo-Turkish Wars, the Thirty Years' War. Multiplayer only. Okay. European yeah, sure. Royal Houses? The fuck are these? The introduction of over 30 new European maps, nine new minor civilizations into the game, and building, uh, adding an arsenal of unique. Uh, hold on. Uh, representing. Okay, so natives. It's, it's natives, basically, but in this case, royal houses. So. Oh, so this is what we get instead of new natives, and the, the quote unquote minor civilizations are like lords of the land who you can like pay for new units. That's super cool. I love that. And it's got historical precedents. All right. Well, and it, you know, because it, it, it keeps, you know, the, the European powers not, you know, you, you can now have a Dutch native map. Yeah. Or an English native map or a French native map without that's, it being, like, too much of a stretch. So cool. This is really smart. That's, I, I uh, that's super smart. smart. Yeah. Representing larger entities whose influence transcended national borders rather than individual people groups. European royal houses thematically blur the lines between major and minor civilizations in Age of Empires the Definitive Edition. Like Native American settlements, Asian holy sites, and African kingdoms, the trading post must be built on European royal houses' palaces to ally with them. Royal houses provide unique ability, a unique ability and more units and technologies on average. Uh, than other minor civilizations. Okay, so wait, unique ability? Is that to say, like, uh, you can get auras, like the Golden Pavilion or some shit from them? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, but these are staggered across multiple ages rather than being available in the Exploration Age. Okay. So they have more stuff, but they're more limited per age. That's cool. Yeah, this is, you know, this is both cool, but at the same time, sometimes the African natives are already, like, super overpowered. So I, I would be curious to see if, one, they count as natives, and then, two, uh, just how it kind of all uh, ends up, because... Yeah, I find it, sometimes, sometimes I'd find it funny if you send, like, blood brothers, and then, like, your European royal house units get extra stats. <laughs> right, you can imagine the, the French curacer curacer rush. <laughs> yeah, it... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, these assets are quite impactful, and the units often utilize novel mechanics such as unit promotions, charge actions, dismounting, and damage deflection, but tend to come at a higher par uh, cost than their counterparts. Okay, so these are supposed to be like high quality special units that are just super expensive. So kind of like a mini shipment instead of like a super instead of just like natives yeah. being a cool yeah they're armor. they're like mercenary lights from my understanding. Okay. Uh, royal so, Houses, the House Bourbon, of Bourbon, Bourbon Wittelsbach, Oldenburg. Yeah, l lots of stuff. And then, yeah, Habsburg, of course. New game modes, Diplomacy. So this is cool. I love Diplomacy from Age of Empires 2. Um, A brand new way to experience multiplayer with your friends, allowing players to change their allegiance to other players during the course of the match, negotiate with your friends over war and peace, and make them pay for it. Wait, what? I'm confused. Dude, this, is, this is just Age of Empires 2 Diplomacy, but... This is all fun. We're definitely going to have to do one in the Discord. Get like six of us. Uh, how, how does it? Captain. How does it work? And what's so stopping? And what's stopping everybody from going to one team and just instantly winning? No, because the thing is, it's last person standing. Oh, so standing, there's one person left. But you can. So everybody usually starts off allied, and that's when the wheeling and dealing starts. Like these are if. if uh, I guess shout out to Dave AOE. Uh, he does a lot of these games uh, in Age of Empires 2, and they're just, they're epic. Um, if you want something that's like not just competitive meta, check it out. Uh, these games are super fun. We definitely have to get some in on the, um, on the group. Because... Yeah, dude. This sounds pretty cool. I, I might give this a shot. And these are fun when everyone's on the same uh, Discord, too, because then it's like, there's just so much line. It, it's hard to describe, but these are some of the most fun game modes. Like, you have all right, to live right. to trade everybody. I'll, I'll, I'll have to give this a shot then. Additionally, one map has been specially crafted around this game mode. Uh, Diplomacy map, 30 Years War. Very cool. Nice. Tycoon, another new game mode. Uh, accompanying Supremacy Deathmatch and Empire Wars. 
designed to focus on the economy building of Age of Empires 3, this game mode provides a setting where players concentrate on creating the strongest economy for their empires without having to bolster armies or defend against large-scale sieges. Wait, so it's literally just resource checkpoints? That sounds lame. But, you know, I mean, a lot of people, especially if you're a treaty player, that might be good practice. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It, it, it's it's more of a practice thing than anything else, you know. Yeah, and some people, I mean, some people, they don't, they get a game about warfare in the early modern period, and they say, you know what, I don't like warfare. What if they could just... <laughs> uh, but, you know, joking aside, I, I think that giving that option, like, if, even if it's just practicing, um, that's kind of cool. Pre-order now? You bet your ass we're going to pre-order now. What do you say we uh, we watch this video just to see if it includes anything new? And also because I want to see footage. <laughs> oh god, that's loud. Holy fuck. I'm so glad I didn't have to hear it on my... Uh, Ooh, it's got... Music. It's got some good music going. The Italians. Oh, Ooh, that's Italian so beautiful. Video. Oh, cool. Cool, beautiful. Hmm. Eight new historical maps. Yep. A brand new game mode, Tycoon mode. Oh, dude, go back, go back. You, that, that was the, uh, the Malta. Did you see that? The emplacement? Uh, sorry, this one? Oh, th there's, here's the gunpowder thing. And there's the fixed yeah. cannon. Hell yeah! Okay, got it. That looks so it's, cool, dude. It's the gun from the freaking end of the campaign. It is. Oh, it is. I love it. And then here's the gunpowder thing. Oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. They, they did a good job. They, they're stroking the member berries, but um, I am so far psyched about it. Like obviously balance. Uh, we'll have to wait till you know it. We see it before we actually talk about balance and what's OP and not OP. But you know, the other day we had somebody mention that the devs are very innovative, um, and I think it really showed in these two. Like, you know, hopefully most of these civs have like recognizable units and, and whatnot, because I know that was like a big gripe from uh, some of the last uh, DLCs that you know it's, it's hard to keep track of who does what. But even this, I mean, these are just wait three. Three, two Falcons. Okay, Industrial Age. Oh, thank God. Well, no, these. No, the I I was ex initially excited about this, but they're actually just showing British age ups. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Yeah, I was um, I was pretty excited at first, but uh, to see like some new age, it's, uh, to see some age up options for for these civilizations. Mm -hmm. But I was like, nope, never mind. That's just that's just Brits. Oh, of course, but. uh... You know, it's it's still like I said with the age ups, everything else, like with the Vils kind of popping out with shipments, you know, hopefully they'll have that balanced. I, I think Italy looks super cool. Malta, like, I'm in a day's full so freaking hard. Because <laughs> um, it was, it was, it's just cool seeing uh, that Civ from the campaign finally realized fully. Yeah. Uh, this is their apology for having them have to use the British flag for, like, the first six months of release in the campaign. <laughs> um, but no, this is, like, so I, I'm really psyched. I think Italy, like, we, we've only seen half of the the kind of concepts of these units so yeah of course uh in the next two weeks but just based off what i just saw for malta like awesome like just uh, agree such kind of a cool design uh a, a, a turtle sieve that forces you to get out of your base at least and like take map control so it's not like you know inca where you just drop a fort and then you sit in your home and build <laughs> up 14 students. like yeah this, this has a lot of mobility um i and, and yeah. yeah, I'm super excited for this. Thank you guys very much for joining us for this. Uh, like and sub, and have a great day, and goodbye. Yep. All right, thanks.